Factoring trinomials. So we're going to be factoring quadratic functions when ax squared plus bx plus c, when the a value here is not equal to 1. So when this a value is not equal to 1, how do we factor out? And these ones take a, a, a few additional steps, uh, which is different from when a is actually equal to 1. So whenever a is not equal to 1, we follow the following steps as we're going to see. Um, so when factoring, when ax squared plus bx plus c, when a value is equal to 1, so or not equal to 1, sorry. So here if we have this first example, it says factor 2x squared plus 7x plus 6. Here is our a value. And notice that our a value is not equal to 1. So what are the steps taken to factor such a trinomial? So step one, we want to make sure our trinomial, our, okay, our quadratic expression, is in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. So what we want to do is we want to rearrange our equation. And, and most likely your equation or expression will be in, this, in that proper order. But sometimes, you know, teacher might give you... Um, your uh, expression in, in different in a different order. So in the above example here, our a value is equal to two. So here's our a value, our b value positive seven, our c value is positive six. Okay, so we need to know these numbers because they are going to come in, in handy when factoring um, such trinomials. So when factoring such quadratic functions, we use something called the sum product rule. Okay. So, some product rule. We're gonna multiply our a and c value of our trinomial. So here is our a value, here is our c value. So we're gonna multiply those two terms together. And then we're gonna state our b value. So our ac is two multiplied by six to give us a value of 12. And then what is our b value? Our b value is positive 7. So we need to know these values in order to help us um, factor such trinomials. And we use something called the sum product rule, as we used in uh, one of the other, in, in the other type of um, trinomial, factoring trinomials, where your a value is actually equal to 1. So now, sum product rule continue. We're going to find two numbers that multiply to that ac value that we got. And those same two numbers must also add up to your B value, okay? So here was our AC value, okay? So what we want to do is we want to find all multiples to our AC value, so all multiples to 12, but those same two digits that we use in here must also be able to be placed in here to add up to 7, okay, to add up to our B value, okay? So the rule is we find two numbers that multiply to whatever these two multiply to, okay, whatever the product is of your AC value, and that same, those same two numbers must be sums uh, into that middle term, that, that B value, okay? So we think about uh, numbers that multiply to 12, okay? So we have uh, all the different terms that multiply to 12, so we have 1 times 12, okay? Is a, is a multiple of 12, uh, or multiples of 12. Two times six, okay? So far with these two multiples, or these multiples of, of 12, none of them will add up to positive seven. So we keep looking, three times four, there's a multiple of seven. But now how do we, we make sure that, you know, which one's positive, which one's negative, uh, and whatnot. But because our value, our multiple here of 12, 3 times 4 is a positive value, we know that we're going to have only positive values, which means that our values here, 3 and 4 that we're going to use, is going to be our sum product rule number. So we're going to use these numbers. These are the numbers that are going to be very, very important when, um, when solving these type of trinomials. So we take 3 and 4. Okay, we're using these values and we're going to expand the middle term with these values. So here is our middle term. We're going to expand that middle term with uh, the values that we found in the previous slide. Okay, so that positive 4, positive 3 were our terms. So we take 2x squared plus 7x plus 6 
and we're going to expand this middle term using these numbers. Okay, so in other words, what I've done is my expression here is still a variation of my, my original question. All I've done was I've expanded my middle term to use these terms here. Okay, notice how these two numbers, when I multiply them together, it gave me the, the 12, and then when I add them together, it gives me this positive 7. Don't forget that even though we use positive 4 and positive uh, 3, don't forget the x because remember, if we are expanding that middle term, we still need to have this, this variable uh, to follow along. So, the order these terms are placed don't matter. However, try to arrange them so they, they can easily be factored. Okay? And you'll know the more you practice these type of problems, uh, the more that will make sense. Okay? So, now, notice the four-term polynomials. Okay? So, whenever we have four-term polynomials, one of the rules that we said in the guideline for factoring, in that video on the guideline for factoring, we're going to factor by grouping. Okay, so here is our four-term polynomial. This is the expanded version. So remember, this is the same as this right now, really. Okay, because if I was to simplify this term, I would go back to the, my original equation. So this is the, the initial step. So we're going to factor by grouping. Okay, and you're going to group the first two terms and the last two terms. So here's our first two terms. Here's our last two terms. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to find a common factor in this first group and then another one in this next group. Okay, so find a common factor from the first group, then find a common factor uh, from the second group. May or may not be similar, and, and we'll talk about that um, later on. Okay, so common factor for the first is 2x. We can factor out a 2x from both of these terms. Okay. And a common factor from our next group is 3. Okay. So we're going to factor out 2x from the first group and just the value 3 from the next uh, set. Okay. And we get the following. So we get 2x been factored out and positive 3 uh, that we factored out from the next group. One thing to keep in mind is, notice that what, whenever we do factor out, these brackets that we get must be the same. Okay? If they are not equal to one another, then you have probably factored by grouping incorrectly. It means that there is something else that can be factorable even further. You have not found the true common factor of each group. Okay? So that is the one thing that you should be looking for when factoring by grouping. Okay, so after factoring by grouping, notice what happens after factoring. Okay, both sets of brackets must be the same as I just said, otherwise you have factored something incorrectly. Okay, so notice that x plus 2 that we have in brackets was the same because when we factored out 2x from the first group, we were left with x plus 2. When we factored 3 from the next group, we are left with x plus 2. Okay, and the final step of factoring by grouping is to factor the binomials in the brackets. So what we're trying to do is, we really have a set of binomials here. This is one term here, this is another term. What is common in both of these terms? And what it is common in both of these terms is that both terms have a set of brackets that are x plus two. Okay. So when we have that x plus two, we wanna be able to remove that x plus two. So factor it out and then open up a new set of brackets and write out the remaining terms as a binomial. So what we're going to do is, because they both have an x plus 2, we are going to factor out x plus 2. And then we have another set of brackets to put whatever's remaining. And look at what's remaining here. 2x, positive 3. We're going to throw those into our next set of brackets. So whenever we're, whenever we're factoring, last step here is factoring the binomials. We are removing what's in the, the common brackets, common sets of brackets, which was x plus 2. And then whatever's left behind. So once we have factored these out to giving us this x plus 2, then we take whatever's left over and we put it 
uh, in the next set of brackets because whenever we factor binomials, okay, sorry, trinomials, whenever we factor trinomials, we get a set of binomials.